Well, good afternoon, everybody. I think I'm going to have a, a good class for all of you. It'll be worth attending today. And then um, uh, we'll get going here right away. So I'm going to do a little Latin number for you by popular demand. How's the volume there? So far, so good? It's a bit loud so far. It's too loud? It just depends if it gets louder when you start playing. Oh, it will be. Okay. How's this? That should be okay. Fine, I'll give myself a round of applause. <laughs> you have to be fast on muters, huh? All right, well, that has nothing to do with the class today. I only, someone said Marianne, and I didn't get any other suggestions. So that's what I ran with. Actually, the first song was not Marianne. Does anybody know what the first song was? Anybody? I'll play a couple notes. What's the name of the song? I'm actually asking because I don't know. <laughs> I know it's L something. Or wait. Cumbanchero. Cumbanchero, yes. Oh, no, it says Kumana. No, Kumana is very similar. I think Kumana is. Uh, isn't that Kumana? I don't know. Cumbanchero, Kumana. Okay. It, yeah, well, I'm going to go with what the teacher says. You don't ever argue with Don on that kind of stuff. I did that last week and she actually sent me a dunce cap and I had to sit in the corner of my store for an hour. It was the most embarrassing thing. Anyway, so today, folks, I'm going to teach <clears throat> something that we've done several times over the last year and a half, but it's always a good reminder because I find myself realizing as I talk to people both on the phone, afar, online, in person, it seems to be a topic that is a good reminder for a lot of students. And there might be some people on today that don't do this a lot. All right, so there's gonna be broken up into two categories. First, I wanna do a, a sort of a, a revised quick snapshot about presets, okay? Now, because I'm covering, uh, I'm actually gonna cover three things today. Um, I'm gonna try to do it I'm going to keep it moving, but I'm not going to go so fast. Maybe we can have a question or two, but I also want to give you the opportunity that if you have any questions afterwards, I'm going to encourage you to schedule a time with your personal assistant. <clears throat> and I'm also going to have some handouts. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, oh, come, just, just in, just, just in, folks. We have Victor was complaining about my 
cork board back there. You see that? It just kind of looks ugly. He said, you need to put something up there if you're going to have. So he printed out something, and I thought I'd better put it up here. I don't know if you could see it from that far anyway. Can you see that? It, it's tiny, so if you do see it, I'll just leave it here. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. It just says buy an organ. So I'll just leave that in the background. It says buy a organ. Oh, he forgot the end. It's called a subliminal message. Not so subliminal. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about presets. Now, if you have, and, and by the way, some of us refer to the Lowry models two different ways. We, we refer to um, the models that have a touch screen. Basically, if you touch it and it does something, whenever we refer to a touch screen model, I think some of the, the teachers and educators refer to it as the big window. Okay, anytime you see that terminology, we're referring to all the models that I listed in the email today, and I'm not going to say them all because I think there was like 20 some out of them. Okay, and the reason why we group them together is a lot of the functions operations are very similar. Now, there are some cases where it's not, um, but in the cases that they are, uh, it's helpful to everybody. Okay, so I'm going to talk about things today that really applies to every model. Is there exception occasionally? Yes. But overall, if you have an SU series that came out the first time in 2001 or the last EX model, you're going to benefit from today. So let's talk about presets for a moment. Now, most of you know <clears throat> you have these lovely things called presets, or as some of the organs say, uh, setups. Okay. And um, Basically, a preset or a setup is ex kind of exactly what it says. It sets up the organ with a sound or a, 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 an arrangement, or it sets it up with something. We'll just dumb it down a little bit. It sets it up with something that's typically pretty good. Now, do I like every preset or setup? No, but do I like them a lot? Yes. Um, and then, so we have these presets here. Now, there's three types of presets maybe four, if you really think about it. One, there's general, the general setups. You just turn it on and you just start pushing these buttons. You're gonna get 10 great setups from Lowry, okay? Then there's what's called bank presets or bank setups. So these letters, A, B, C, D, and E, they're called bank presets or bank setups. What these do is they have something there already. I'm not going to tell you what, what's all in there, but I'll give you a quick idea. Is there's stuff in there, and typically by the factory, um, preset A gives you great organ sounds. B gives you what's called what we refer to as the Hammond organ sound. C is uh, typically from the factory, the church organ sounds. D are a lot of the symphonic. You'll find a lot of strings, and E is referred to as novelty. <clears throat> okay? Then you come over here, there's category presets. We'll get, we'll get to those in a moment. And then there's what's called rhythm presets. Okay? Now, rhythm preset is very important because... This is what probably most of you use when you turn on your instrument. Most people, first thing they do is they select a rhythm style. Now this is where you can, uh, anybody can pick a rhythm style. The first one I hear is the first one I'm gonna choose. Category, you tell me. Anybody? Latin. Okay, so I'm gonna push the Latin category. And once I push the Latin category, a lot of the models have it where the rhythms automatically come up. If you have a variation one and two, you can push the two together and all of the rhythms will show up on the screen, okay? Now, on my Latin category here, I have two Latin buttons. I have Latin one and Latin two. And I'll just start off with just simply the Latin one. Actually, it just so happens what I started off with today was a samba. So I'll use the samba. I had my own presets, okay? So what I'm gonna do 
is put on rhythm preset. Now, make a note to self. If you have an A series model, <coughs> this is going to say normal rhythm preset. Most of you have that, okay? If, if you only have one here, then it's classified as normal rhythm preset. So almost all of the SU series organs have that. So if you're not sure what your model is, that's a good question for your personal assistant. If I was to ramble it off very quickly, I would say Legacy Rhapsody Royale Sensation Performer, Stardust Grand Royale. There's another one, but I'm not gonna say it. <clears throat> I might've missed one, but if you have one of those, you have simply a rhythm preset button, okay? Now, some of the models on the SU, the Palladium, almost all of the A series, and when I say almost all of the A series, I'm referring to Sterling, Patriot, Symphony, Liberty, Imperial, I might miss one in there. Um, they have what's called an organ rhythm preset. Okay, now I'm gonna stop there before I go to the E's. And it's pretty simple. When you put on normal rhythm preset and a style, in this case I have Samba, I'm going to get 10 setups plus the normal button without a number is considered zero. So 10 plus one equals most people would say 11. We'd make the joke sometimes it's 22 because that's the top and the bottom. But for ease of use, you got 11 setups for the top and the bottom keyboard. Now, organ rhythm preset, this to me is one that I like to remind a lot of people about because it's, if some people don't like the, the use of organ sounds, they tend to avoid this button. And it's a shame because if you have an organ rhythm preset, zero plus a 10, that's an, an additional 11 presets for every rhythm. Now this organ I'm playing on has, I think 260 rhythms as an example. 260 times 11 is, is over 2,700. If you have more rhythms than that, it adds up. Now most people say, well, that's a lot of organ sounds I wouldn't use. I'll get to this in a second, but it's not always 11 organ sounds, okay? Now, before I have Sean display the preset info thing we've used in the past, just get it ready, Sean. For you EX owners, because Lowry knew when you had the EX, if you went from an A series model to an EX, they knew or maybe they, they knew, I don't know. Maybe they thought, they had a hunch that there might be some people that complain out there. And I know we don't have a lot of people that complain, right? I can tell who you are, they're laughing. <laughs> but I was one of the complainers. I, I was potentially a complainer because I've been playing an SU series and an A series organs for years. So I knew where things were. I knew when I put Frank in the count rhythm preset two, I got a guitar sound that I loved. What happened is on the EX, they came out with the style setup concept. And what they did is the new normal style setup was new setups, okay? So what happened to the old one? Well, what they did is they added a button called vintage. And all that means is all of those setups are 98% close to the similar setup as the previous models. So if you have a rhythm preset, you have 11 setups for every rhythm. If you have an organ rhythm preset, you have 11 organ rhythm presets for every rhythm. And if you have the EX, you have normal rhythm preset, which is vintage, organ rhythm preset, and the new style setup. That's an additional 10 or 11 for every rhythm. That's a lot of setups. So that's either 11 times every rhythm or 22 times every rhythm or 33 times every rhythm. Now, years ago, Larry came up with a concept and what you're about to see is I will post this handout. I've done it in the past, but I'll do it again. I'll post it up on our Patreon site so you can download it if you need it. It's also found in a lot of the books. So Sean, why don't you put up that preset info? This should look familiar. <clears throat> when you have 
rhythm preset on. Can you see that? You might want to look at that. When you have rhythm preset on or vintage style setup on the EX and you have a rhythm, these are the types of sounds you will get. Some of the organs actually say that, but what happened? They're showing oh, on the screen, right? I see them on the screen. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what happened was Lowry eventually, I mean, when I put on Samba and rhythm preset number two, it says a little more. Now, just leave that up on the screen there. Here's Samba, rhythm preset zero. Okay, so I got a nice rhythm style. I got a nice kind of an organ sound with that. And I got something at the bottom, a brass on the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what I get. Now, if I push number two with rhythm preset, it says a little more. Now, does anybody have a guess what a little more means? Feel free to unmute yourself. Well, here's the answer. You're not going to like it. A little more means it's going to be just a little bit more of a full arrangement and sound from the number one. Well, gosh, Robert, it says easy. What does easy mean? It means you're going to get an easy type of a setup from the initial one. Well, what sound am I going to get? We have no clue till we press it, right? So what Lowry did on some of the models, they learned from this. This was a great method. They started actually specifically telling you on the screen what's on the top and what's on the bottom. For those of you who have that, you just look in your screen and you know. However, I like to provide this for people who have it because at least you'll know before you use the sound what type of sound you're going to get. So if I push number one from zero, it says it's going to give me an easy setting. Now here's zero again. Now here's one. Now listen to the band when I switch. I'm gonna go down three, two, one, and switch, and watch what happens. Three, two, one. Now, could you hear a difference in just the band? It wasn't as busy, right? Here's without it. Here's with it, number one. You notice how the band kind of just got really nice and simple, easy, but the sound that changes is also simple and easy. Okay. So what does number two give me? A little more than number one. <laughs> it, and the sound will change. Okay, vocals, solo, except finale means it'll get a big sound or what have you. Now, for those of you who have on your organs where it actually tells you what sound you get, that's great. But I always encourage to kind of keep this around because at least you'll know when you're playing what kind of sound, how big or soft it's going to be. Now, here's the other thing to keep in mind. Where it says vocal or bells and whistles, it's not always just a vocal sound. It may be a touch of a vocal sound with a piano, maybe a touch of vocal sound with a string. And, um, uh, organ sound may not always be just an organ sound. It may be an organ sound with a, a bell sound, a bell-like, okay? All right. So let's remove that screen for a moment, and I'll have you bring it back up. So let's talk about organ rhythm preset. When I put on organ rhythm preset, here's what organ rhythm preset does. It sets up the top keyboard with 11 organ combinations. Now those organ combinations tie in with what you just saw on the screen. Okay? So zero will be whatever it'll be. One will be a, like a, a soft or easy organ. Two might be a little more than that. Um, and I'll have them pull up in a minute. Um, it follows the order, only the dominant sound is typically the organ sound, but it does add other voices. Now, pay very close attention to this next part as Sean puts that up on the screen. I got my camera froze because Jerome is calling me. Hi, Jerome. Tell him I said hi, okay? I'm doing a class right now on Zoom with about uh, 60 people. 
he got off. He knew what that meant. <laughs> okay. So the organ sounds work the same way, only it's going to be mostly organ sounds. Okay. So I'm going to put on organ rhythm preset with the samba. And here's the first sound I get on zero. All right. Wow, that's cool. Even the background turned into an organ sound. Okay. Now watch what happens when I go to number one. Notice how it got simplified. And it's an easy organ sound. Now let me go to number five and see what happens. Now, here's where I want to pause. <clears throat> you see that map up? Oh, no, you don't see that map. Oh, I thought you were going to do a dance. Hold on, I'll put the screen back up. <laughs> okay. What you'll find, and I'm not going to say 100% of the time, I'm going to say 97% of the time. Okay. The top keyboard will give you all those organ combinations. So like number seven might give me organ with some vocals, and it does. Okay. But on the bottom keyboard, on a lot of the presets, it'll also use that same roadmap and put orchestral sounds on the bottom keyboard. Okay. Now you can take it off. And I'm going to just play some of the presets and you'll hear on the bottom keyboard, they're not all organ sounds. Now here's what I noticed on that. Eight out of the 10 followed the same map that you had on the screen there. So if you have organ rhythm preset and you don't use it a lot, maybe because you like, I don't only use the organ sounds for certain things, which I do a lot, that's great. But that bottom right keyboard is setting up a similar map to what you saw, all the sounds on the, even if you don't have that, just know on that bottom right, it's pulling a lot of the orchestral and solo sounds additional to the presets, the other presets. So if you're not using that, hopefully you'll start using that and you'll realize there's a whole group of sounds there that you can benefit from. And last but not least for you EX owners, that roadmap on the new style setups is still very similar. Now, don't ask me what percent, how close it is to that but it's pretty close. It uses, but the difference is the sounds are different. So if number six was a solo, it might put on normal set setup. It might put on a clarinet. And if you use vintage, it might put on a saxophone. Okay. So what's the point on all this? If you have rhythm preset, organ rhythm preset, or style setup, vintage or organ, Use all of those, including the organ ones, because you're going to get a find a lot more sounds that you maybe normally don't get. Okay. Now, looks like we have a question from Carolyn here. You that's wanna... good because I was going to say if anybody has a question, now's a good time before I go on to the next segment. Go ahead, Robert. On number five, you had on the top keyboard, you have the organ sound, but it is bells. No, you don't hear too much too many bells in the background because no, no, your no. organ yeah but let me back let me back up on a little bit i okay. was using organ rhythm preset that time oh okay so sometimes i i've had it happen where i put on uh the one that i use a lot is um it's a uh, it's the rumba big band big band latin big band. if you put big band latin organ rhythm preset five i think it puts on organ mm -hmm. with a vibraphone so okay. a lot of times it will set up an additional sound that kind of coincides. So it's not going to be 100% to that, but you'll find that it will be 
it'll be close to it, but the right lower right keyboard will be right. about 95% to the map that you saw. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions before I go on to the next segment? The next segment is going to be a little bit shorter because I'm going to try to, I'm going to, I'm going to take, and Sean will get a laugh out of this. I'm going to take what I will, will say in two minutes and stretch it to five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I can take one topic and drag it out for 20 minutes. I won't 30. do that. I'll make it five minutes, which means it might be seven minutes. I'll set the timer. <laughs> set the timer. And that's category setups. Now, I know a lot of you use category setups, but I have to encourage the use, if you don't use them a lot, encourage going through the ones, even the ones you, you may not use. As, as in case with the organ rhythm preset, I'm hoping some of you out there are going, huh, I might put on organ rhythm preset more often because there's a whole group of sounds. Now think about it. If you have 260 rhythms, that is an additional 2,700 plus sounds on that lower right combinations that you would not be using if you don't use organ rhythm preset. That's just here, okay? Category setups are almost self-explanatory. I think, I think I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give this to you. Uh, I'll probably have to screen share this. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna very quickly put it up on the screen. Because I forgot to send this one to you, Sean. All right, do you see that? Yep. There's a finger there. That's Sean's hand right there, by the way, folks. Now, this one was taken out of the Lowry Liberty book. Okay. So this category setups, which is found uh, trying to see if I can get this to Sean so I can not go back and forth. What page is that on? Yeah, never mind. Okay. 36. Okay, I can find it. I'll, if you I'll can find, find it. it it's, it's, the, it's the Liberty Owner's Manual, page 35 or 6, whatever that says at the bottom. Okay. You got it, dude. I just, you have it? Well, not yet, but yeah, I'll find okay. it. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that up, and then when I go to the Oregon, I'll take off the screen share so I can demonstrate while you're pulling it up. So basically, category setups, there's, there's several pages of them. Okay, I'm going to take that off for a minute. So you have, a lot of you have, where there's about three or four or five listed here and then a more. If you have the E series, like the Marquee, Grand Marquee, Aria, it's put into one button. All right. So... We have on this, this example, a lot of the organs have theater, country, big band shows, Latin. And, and for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you are newer to this, I'm sure there's somebody out there, in the, the easy explanation is you, when you select a category, it's going to give you, wow, look how fast that Sean Maloney is. I even zoomed in. He's like a Super Sean. Someday we're going to have a Dazzling Dawn and Super Sean's concert extravaganza. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fine. With all these fancy nicknames. Anyway, so <clears throat> when you push uh, the more button, uh, it will pull up some additional ones. Okay, now let me go back to the organ for a moment. So for those of you who have it on the dash here, so a lot of you have theater, country, big band, shows, Latin. Simply, when you press one, you'll get 10 setups for the, on the upper and the lower that give you sounds that are catered to that style of music. So if I push country, I'm going to get 10 country sounds. You know, There's going to be fiddles and violins and so forth and big band. A lot of those are pretty obvious. Okay, show show tune type sounds, Latin. And then if I push more, it, what it does is gives me that screen like Sean has up in about three seconds to 
1.50. There it is. So when I push more, what it's doing is it's giving me more of those categories. So instead of adding all these buttons on the organ, they just pull them up on the screen. So you'll see there's one that says modern and holiday and scared and bells and lush. Oh, I mean sacred, sacred, not scared. Okay. And when you select, and it, they're pretty self-explanatory. You got, if you push bells, what'll happen is you'll get 10 great setups on the top keyboard. Just leave it there. I'll just play a couple. So we have, this is bells and I'm just hitting random numbers. Um, if you put on the jazz, zeros, jazz on that screen? Yep, so jazz zero. A lot of people wonder if how I get jazz zero gives me this. A brass section with the trumpet shake. And then on the bottom, a growl saxophone. I'm not gonna go through each one, but I'm just giving you a couple examples, <clears throat> okay? Now, one of the pages on that Liberty Manual, it shows you a bunch of them all on one, right? Do you have that? It, it, a, different, a different page or the same page? Just... Page 36, just not. Oh, just lower, okay, yeah. 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 Let me go ahead and put that and the marquee right. and everybody else applicable sterling prestige actually prestige is where they started this idea they added an additional page so the top left one there most people that have the more button in the category has that page okay and then at the bottom right of the top no, i'm sorry the top screen on the right you'll see where that finger is see where sean's finger is where it says next under lush right there okay when you press next what happens is another page shows up and it says or harmony organ and then etc cetera, etc cetera. if i go next it'll go to the next page if you keep pressing next depending on the model you'll have you'll have an additional page of sounds and i want to leave it on that page right there the, the what interested me in doing this is the one on the left there where it says harmony, organ, smooth flutes, this is another one of those categories that sometimes people don't use because they, that's the, the famous, well, I don't really use organ sounds. Well, when I play a lot of my songs, I don't use organ sounds a lot either. In fact, I don't use, there's a lot of sounds I do use a lot. I like to use them all. However, I do get ideas like diapasons, for example, you know, it gives you the big pipe type organ sounds with a diapason effect. But I also found sounds like this. This is diapason one as an example. But as I use these sounds, some of them I go, ah, oh, I probably like that. Sometimes I go, I won't use that. And then every now and then I'll run into something like this. And I'll just find sounds that I will use. So when I, if you were to ask me, when you use diapason, which one do you use a lot, Robert? I could tell you in a snap, ready? Zero, one, two, nine, and 10. Why? Because I went through them and I chose the ones that I really like. And I've used them so much over, over the years that I know those are the ones I like. If people don't use those presets, you'll never discover something new. Here's another category. Uh, well, there's a bunch of them, but um, if I go to sound effects, there's one called sound effects. Now sound effects, if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get a lot of the funny sounds like horses and things like that, the answer is yes. But I discovered by going through some of those sound effects categories that I've actually found some sounds in there that I really love. In fact, when I did my song theme from Ice Castle, when I did the arrangement for that in um, the song of the month, I can't remember, two or three songs ago, 
my sounds that I got were from sound effects. Now, here's an example. I'm going to pull up my screen. Sound effects says, yeah, it says merry old and cars. Yeah, so you got. It's got the funny sounds in there. OK, I get it. And this one says guitar and animals. OK, that's fun if you want a good laugh. And so a lot of them say that. But then I, I uncovered one that I love, number nine, as an example. Not a pretty sound. Most people wouldn't know that's there unless they're told or if they experiment. That was sound effect number nine. And that gave me that pretty guitar sound with a string on top and this beautiful chimes. And by the way, these wind chimes on that preset, you can't manually find it on the organ. It's only built into that preset. Okay, hold that thought. There's another one that I found, I used in that same song at the very end. Notice that little rolling timpani that I put there. <clears throat> Those two presets I actually use for the entire song from Theme from Ice Castles when I play it. Sometimes we don't use those setups, we don't find those. Now, I'm gonna come back to that sound effect one and I'm just gonna go up on the screen here, put up more again. Um, now there's, some of you have, when you go to the, the category setups, I don't know if it's on that page, I think it was, uh, it says A, B, C, D on there. Go ahead and pull that up real quickly. <clears throat> Okay, so just a quick explanation. I know some of you know this, but if you don't and you have this, it says A, B, C, D, E. The easiest answer for that is this. You have A, B, C, D on the organ on the dashboard, and they're also located in the screen. For those of you who like to customize or use customized presets made for you, the reason why this is there is that if you load in your presets, and you like you, they, they temporarily go into the organ on A, B, C, D, and E. But like me, I love the B category, I love the D category, I love E0. So what happens is I lose those temporarily. So to get them back, most people reset the organ. You don't have to if you have it on the screen. So there they are on the screen. Now go ahead and put it onto the organ here. So if you load presets in, someone gives you presets and you load them in, those setups that are there are now being customized and they go away. But if you like the ones from the factory, you can load your presets all you want. And if you have them in the screen, you can always go back to the screen and get them. So now they're in two places. You can customize these. You don't customize the ones on the screen. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. If that doesn't, make a note and ask Get with your personal system because all too often people find themselves resetting the organs so much when they don't really have to because they're there. Okay. Um, and there's some categories from theater organs from the US, sound sampled from the UK. Um, now, that's as far as this screen goes on the Patriot. There's another page of sounds. In the Liberty, there's an additional page on top of that. <clears throat> on the Marquee, there's another page on top of that. In Aria, there's a page on top of a page. <laughs> And the more presets you have that you can explore, the more sounds. If you don't think you're going to use them because you don't like that category, like there's one called modern, there's a, there's a rock category, there's a pop category, I would encourage you to at least go through and explore because you'll find most of the time there are sounds that you probably, you would find that you wouldn't think you would use until you get to it. Now, the last thing I want to <clears throat> mention and this is going to lead, hopefully, to an opportunity for you to have a session with a personal. How long did I do that, Sean? Was that seven minutes? 
It was seven minutes exactly. Uh, 18, I believe. <laughs> no, I counted seven. It was 18, Robert. It was eight minutes? Okay, I'll, I'll settle with eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's okay, because I knew I'd have 15 minutes left after that. Now I'm gonna go back to the sound effect category. Now, show of hands, if you, for the ones that I see on the screen, you ever find a category setup you really like, you just use all the time, right? I do it, I told you I did it, the sound effects, I love those. Sometimes I'll put on a rhythm and I'll go to the category and I, you know, I poke around, and I go, ooh, I really love that sound. And then I wanna use it in the case in point for theme from Ice Castles. Now, the sound effect category is an example. If you do sound effect nine, that this sound here, there are wind chimes in the organs, but those specific ones, if you pull it up on the screen and scrolled and scroll back, it'll go away. Try it. They're, they're only there when you use that preset. That Bill Curry, he's a sneaky one. However, I wanted to use that setup for the song theme from Ice Castles, but I didn't want to have to constantly go back and forth to hit that button. So what I did is I saved that preset to A1, A2, okay, A3, et cetera, et cetera. Now I know a lot of you know how to save presets, but what I'm going to flash up on the screen, and when I say I'm gonna flash up, Sean's gonna flash it up. Screen share it up, but I'm not say flash, Mike. What am I screen sharing? I think, did I give it to you? The preset, how to save a preset? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. I've got another version with pictures if you think that'll help, but that's okay. Here's, here's this. Does that no, show? I know the other one with pictures is from an owner's manual, yes? No, I made it. Oh, well, we'll just go with this because I don't know what you have. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I muted you because I thought it was me. I mix us up. Well, that's one way to shut me up, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we had a few classes here locally in the store. And I said, I had it all written up on the dry erase board. And <laughs> what happened was I said, I hope you all have it. And you got it now, right? And I erased it. <laughs> and then there was, of course, two students that I didn't get it. <laughs> So what I did is I, I simply wrote out the, the simple, fastest way of how to save a preset. Now, by the way, saving presets is not just good for yourself to have a sound that you find that you love. You don't have, it's, it's great for that, but it's also great if you wanna record a song. You know, when I record a song, I always have my presets program A1 in order. It doesn't matter where I get the sounds from. I pull from a lot of different places. I always save them in order. So when I go to record the song, I don't have to worry about pushing the wrong button. I just have to go one through the other. If you don't know how to save a preset, this is the, the, the simplest version. You, you set up the organ first. I didn't, I didn't put that on there, did I? You, know, you set up the organ first. And then once you have the setup that you like, you just simply press memorize, it says it right there. You press a bank letter, in other words, A, B, C, D, or E. Now, most of the time we, we tend to say A because it's just very, it's natural. You, don't, you can do any letter you want. But a lot of the times when I'm saving presets for a song or a category of music, whatever the case is, I just use A. Now, if you have something there already, you might start in B. And it says, press a preset number. And then on the screen, it will give you an option to save with or without a style. And it asks you to save with or without a transpose, you just pick one and then you press memorize to confirm it. Now, do you have that picture that looks like that? Sean, is that what you're referring to? Of the screen? Yeah. 
yeah, I can open up mine. My my steps are slightly different because I do I do include the setup stuff. Let me let me pull it up. It'll just take a second because I have to find it. You see. Okay, found it. Please doing that. So basically, when you have the organ set up the way you want it, doesn't matter what it is you're doing, you press memorize. You pick a letter. And I'll just for the heck of it, I'll just push E in this case. Okay. And then on the screen, it'll say up. Oh. Okay. So there it is. So everything that I just had typed out is is actually very similar. It says touch memorize to begin. You push push a letter, followed by a number. And then that screen will show up and it says yes or no. Are you able to zoom in on that a little bit where it says memorizing to? There we go. In this case, he's using B2 as an example, okay? Yes with a style. <clears throat> and then you say yes or no with transpose. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now it's a personal preference, it's a personal opinion. 98% of the time or more, I never save the transpose unless it's a specific, specific reason. Okay? Like, you know, it's only the beginning of a song that you, you, there are some presets I save that are set up the very beginning of the song. I always want to start off in B flat. Well, then I might save that preset. The rest of my presets, I do not save with a transpose. The reason I do that is because sometimes I transpose partway through the song while I'm playing anyway. And if I've transposed up three and a half times or four times, and then I push a preset that's transposed, it, it, it starts jumping around and it sounds funny. So I'm going to say that again. And if you go back and watch this recording, if you're making a note to yourself, most of the time I save the transpose, it's on the very first preset of something that I'm doing for a song. The rest of the presets, I leave that as a no. I leave that. And most of the time, I don't even transpose. I save it that way. I just remember to do it. Because a lot of times, I'll change it. And then you confirm it by pressing Memorize again. <clears throat> Okay, now that page, I'm going to want you to send me a copy of that because what I'm going to do is send, I'm going to attach what I had. Now pull up my, my, the, the text that I had. Okay, now is there more below that page? Okay, that's saving you presets to a USB, but if you go a little further down, Leave that up there. I didn't. I don't think I got every one of them. But if you have any of those organs, write down those page numbers. In your owner's manual, those those are the page numbers that tells you how to do this. And I believe it's saving presets to a USB. Don't quote me on that. So what I'm going to do is after I load, load this, this class up to our Patreon site this weekend, and I'm gonna make it public so everybody can access it, I'm gonna have two attachments, two or three. Uh, one will be the one that Sean had up. One will be my version. So you, you could have whatever method works best for you. I'll also put up the preset information. Am I missing anything? Uh, free coupons, anything like that? Free coupons. Yeah, sure. I could probably put a free coupon up there. If you download that free coupon, it'll give you free virtual classes at Fletcher Music Centers for 10 weeks. And $10 off a uh, new organ purchase. And $10 off for every button on the organ. Oh, we're Carolyn, recording this. Carolyn has a question. Edit that part out. Go ahead, Carol. 
Okay. Carol or Carolyn? Carolyn? Yeah, I'm here. Um, Robert, the yes. most important thing that you want to remind your students is that when you memorize, write it down where you are memorizing it to in the book that you're working with or a particular sheet. Because as time passes, you forget what you're doing, telephone rings, et cetera, et cetera. However, you might want to put on your in your notes there to your people, write it down, the bank that it's in and the preset number that you're putting it to. That's one method. So everybody, that's a good method. I do that anyway. There's another thing you can do too. Sometimes you can rename it on the screen, but that's a whole nother class. Now, I'm gonna pause right there on this because I can spend another hour just on saving presets. What I wanted to do today was just getting people using the presets mm -hmm. the instrument has, okay? Category presets, and hopefully using them in, in ways that maybe you didn't use them before. However, we are gonna do, I am gonna do a follow-up class. Now, most people will say, well, why wouldn't you do a, a class on how to save presets before you give the handout? Well, I did this intentionally. I wanted to cover just using what you got. And then over time, what's gonna happen is you're gonna discover things that you really like and you're gonna to wanna to reuse. The next step is maybe saving them, like we just gave you a quick explanation, and then even save them on the USB. Because if, like I mentioned, I alluded to it a little bit earlier, if you ever wanna record a song, which is a great way, great thing to do, sometimes for yourself, you wanna share it with a family member, one of the best things you could do is saving a preset on the organ. So that's why I'm, I'm giving those, um, I'm gonna provide those handouts. You could start using those. Um, in the 17th of September, that's the correct date, right? I mentioned earlier, Dawn's gonna teach a class. She's gonna teach a class on how to record a song. And uh, I believe you're going to teach them how to put it on a USB, on a CD, MP. What, Don, you want to say a couple things on that so I don't misinform? Well, I, I usually do a once a month class on, on big window instruments. And somebody said, can we please do recording how to record a song? Sure, let's do that. How to record a song onto a USB, um, onto a disc, if you still have a disc drive organ and then how to put it onto a CD if you do have that. So we'll go through all of that and I have handouts already for those. Um, and any of your questions that you have about today's class, I can also help with that as well because yeah, memorizing presets is the other side of it. How to put those onto a stick, um, how to use them. And I know Robert's Song of the Month is a great example. He always gives you arrangements and those are, when you want to do your presets. Those are, that's also when you want to record the song that he just did for you. So that will be on the 17th, one o'clock, in store and on Zoom. Ooh. Ooh. I guess I'm flying out. <laughs> Actually, I'll be on, I will be on an airplane while you're doing that. Um, okay, we have one question before I play a finale song and uh, quick announcements. Helen, is that you raising your hand? Can't see it from here. Helen, you have a question? Yes, can you hear me? Now I can, uh-huh. Okay, um, when you press the category uh, pre, um, setup, do you also have to press the uh, left for uh, country, for instance? Do you also have to press the country rhythm? No, the category setups do this. They set up the top and the bottom keyboard with sounds, uh -huh. instrument, okay? Now at that point, you could either play with a rhythm or without, it just doesn't matter. Oh, okay. The yeah. other thing that I like to point out is you don't always have to play, this doesn't, this, this does not have to match what you push here. Now it's common, most people go, I'm gonna use a big band category, I better use a big band rhythm. No, you can use a big band category with country music. You can use a big band women with the Latin because you know it's gonna give you trombones and saxophones and so forth, okay? So now 
most of us do use categories with rhythms because we use rhythms a lot, but there's a few people that you can do it either way. Okay, thank okay? you. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, Sean is at his computer and he's going to go to a website because you've heard me say the word Patreon a few times and a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I had, I had a few of these looks like, what is that? Sean, what is that exactly? Sorry, it's hard to multitask between a couple of things. So let me pull up our Patreon site so I can show you while I talk here. Uh, Patreon is wonderful. It's actually just a site for our super fans. If you want bonus content, which means extra videos, you know, maybe you're on vacation out in Hawaii while we're trying to do some classes and you missed it, you can always catch up and check out anything we've done on our Patreon website here, uh, where it's just kind of our overflow. You get access to anything we do at any time. So if you become a patron here, you get some free stuff like this, or you get bonus unlockable videos that you get to check out. Um, we even had, uh, I don't know if I, if I should say, but we even had a video. Let me go all the way to the bottom here, see if it shows up. We've got a live concert uh, featuring Marco Mendez on here as well that some people don't know about. Things like that where you can't get anywhere else. So it's a good way to get extra stuff, extra videos and all sorts of stuff you might not even know is there. Carolyn, you have another a question? I like, another thing I like to tell people, a lot of people, because it's been around a little longer, are familiar with YouTube. Well, Patreon is very similar. Not everything is posted on our YouTube channel. And I say that because I've gotten a few emails over the last several weeks going, I didn't see this one on YouTube. I didn't see that one on YouTube. It's because they're not all visibly uh, um, available on there. But everything we've done since last, I want to say October or September, is on our Patreon, and you can find them. If you notice, when Sean was in that screen, he clicked up a box. You could find class, like if you want to go back and see all of Don's classes, it has her name. You click on it, and it'll show you all the classes that Don teaches. Or if you want Sean, or you click that little box there. Look at that. So there's stylings and intermediate classes he teaches. One of those says Don Casanova in there somewhere. <clears throat> Can't see it past my camera. But then you click on that. What will happen is everything that she does, so like Don, uh, Joni has 38 of them. I think Don is up to 105, Don Casanova. I know she's in there because I'm her secretary. I put all of her classes up there. There it is. Yeah, see? So you see everything that, that Don has will show up. Song of the Month, you can search by Song of the Month, you can search by product feature classes, you can search by everything. And anytime there are handouts like we're talking about today, like there, sure. that's a handout, right? So in that example, click on it and then voila, then you can get a copy of that. Now look at, just looking at those two pages, doesn't look like it takes Don about 10 minutes to put that together. I have a feeling she takes a little bit longer. Is that about right, Don? <laughs> I know because when I call and interrupt her doing that, she says, I can't talk right now. I'm preparing my class. Mm -hmm. She puts a lot of time and effort in that and she gets all that information to me every single time she teaches and then I get it up on that site. So it, it's definitely worth um, the money that you contribute for that. With that said, um, uh, we have other stuff going on throughout the month. Stay tuned in, check the calendars. Um, and I'm going to close off with a little number here. I opened up with Marianne. Robert. Um, yes. I have a question. Yes. On, um, Don had a, um, on bridge over troubled water, she sent you something and she scanned it and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't print it with a scan. Can you turn that into a PDF? I probably could. Was it for the class? Yes, it was. Yeah, do me a favor, whoever's asking, I can't see you. Just send me an email and I'll go back and update it and make sure that it works for everybody. And then, and, then I'll, and then I have an option to 
click notify everybody. So you might get a notification if you're a Patreon member. Okay, oh, I'm a oh. Patreon member. Yeah, whoever's asking me, I can't see you. Who's, who is that? Keith. Keith, where are you? I hear you. Oh, there you are. Okay, Keith, send me an email. Roman at FletcherMusic.com or it's the email that I send out for today's class. That's where it comes from. And I'll and it'll be good for me because then I can I'll be rem, I'll be reminded to take take a look into that. Okay. With that said, I'm gonna close with the same style of music that I open with, but I'm not gonna play Marianne. Okay. I just I was just curious to see what would happen if I play this song a little faster. So here we go. Actually, I had a samba. Let me pr pull up a mambo. Ooh, the filling. Thank you thank you very much we hope you enjoyed this class today we hope you learned a thing or two or three or four and if, you thank you. if you have any questions reach out to your personal assistant and just ask they're all here for you and stay safe keep playing music and mwah. Mwah. <laughs> okay, here we go